Hello and welcome back to another episode. Before we get started today, I wanted to do a big shout out to the amazing and currently only sponsors of this podcast, the members of my lovely Radical Academy, better known as LRA. These people are incredible and they constantly level up and show up for doing this work on themselves and their contribution is the reason that this podcast can be here for you today. And also to mention that there will be another round of the Lovely Radical Leadership 12-week breakthrough container coming soon for anyone who wants to have the same breakthrough that I personally had, the combination of processes and tools and wisdom and experiences that finally helped me have an amazing breakthrough in all areas of life. This container contains weekly group calls, weekly chats, and tasking that is specific to you and your situation. So if this sounds like something for you, please send an email to support at lovelyradical.net with the subject line, I am ready to break through. And for now, let's get on with today's topic, which is victim mentality. (laughs) I know. So do you constantly feel as though you have no control over the situations that other people are maybe out to get you or do you feel as though bad things just keep happening to you no matter what you do? If you find yourself blaming other people for events or situations in life that you may be struggling with, this is what is known as victim mentality. And people with victim mentality feel as though bad things keep happening to them and the world is against them. And you may feel as though everyone else is against you as well. And even though there might be things that you can do to help fix the situation, you feel as though it's not even worth it because everything is always out of your control. And in addition to this, you may take things personally and And even when they're not directed at you or personal towards you at all, you may think thoughts like, what did I do to deserve this? Or why me? And you might also feel resentful a lot of the time. And most likely you went through a bad time in your life or a trauma that created this belief in you. And Perhaps you had no coping strategies at that time and you developed this negative viewpoint on life or people or the world, which became a victim mindset. And this led you to believe that life just happens to you and you have no control or responsibility over what actually happens in life. And Even when people come along and try to offer you solutions, you probably come up with a whole list of reasons why those solutions won't work for you. And this can leave those who are trying to offer you help feeling frustrated. Maybe even they give up on you. You might even ask the question why you continue to behave this way. And my question is, have you recognized the secondary gain? Now, secondary gain is when we are gaining something from a behavior that we're doing that is actually potentially more negative, but we're actually gaining something from that behavior. Therefore, to resolve or improve the problem would mean we lose the thing we're gaining from having the problem. So you might be gaining sympathy or attention for your distress from what happened to you. You might feel relieved that others are offering you help or validation. Heck, you might have built a whole social media community or a business around a victim story. And you probably don't ever want to feel feel vulnerable again. And so it's easier not to take risks and not to find a solution. Now, those with victim mentality hold three very strong beliefs. Number one is that bad things happen in the past, and so they'll continue to happen. Number two is others are to blame. Number three is there's no point trying to make a change because 
it will never work for me. And at its core, when you experience a traumatic situation, typically at the hands of other people, or at least it seems that way, you may learn that you are helpless and that nothing you do in the future is going to make any difference. And this creates a program in the unconscious mind of unworthiness, not being good enough, being replaceable, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And when you start to have similar things happen through life to back up the proof that these things will keep happening, you just start stacking more and more of that on top of this program. It's hypnotizing you to believe those beliefs that you have because your brain has been trained to seek out those situations because those situations are so much more familiar than solutions. Your brain will always seek more of that in your reality because it only has one job and that's to keep you safe and alive And keeping you safe and alive means keeping you in the familiar. And this leads you to feel more vulnerable and afraid. And in turn, you choose to take no responsibility or place blame on other people and make excuses even when there are actions you can take. And I'm just going to say at this juncture that as I say all of this, I used to be the biggest victim by choice you could imagine. And there are people who will back me up on that. (laughs) And society doesn't help either. And the news, if you start to notice the news, current affair shows, certain influences online, reality TV, it's all programming into more victim mentality. It's more programming into blame everything outside of yourself. You'll start to notice if you do still unfortunately watch any of these things and hopefully you'll start to divert your attention to something better that it's weaved into the very cause of our societal structures and yet those who have the success that you want, who are creating success, have decided to tune out of the things that feed victim mentality like the news, current affair shows, certain influences, reality TV shows, oof, And turn their attention to something better. Turn their attention to asking questions. Turn their attention to seeking solutions from people who have created solutions rather than those who are just continuing to complain about a problem. And while it's understandable that you might feel this way after a traumatic series of events, the truth is, is that there are always multiple factors involved in any bad situation. While you might not have been able to control what happened to you in the past, it's likely that you do have a degree of control over what happens to you now, right? And what happens moving forward. While it's okay to feel bad about what has happened to you in the past, can we start to make sure that from now on, we start to move through difficult emotions. Everyone with a victim mindset needs to find an end to this self-pity cycle and work towards change in order to heal. It's just the last thing you're actually going to want to do in that state. But otherwise, you... Your feelings of being a victim and being powerless will follow you the rest of your life. And because that happens, because you choose to continue to focus on the victim story, you'll create more stories of being a victim and more situations that prove that you are a victim Because that is what your brain is going to find more of in your reality. You're going to create these situations and new connections and new relationships and new workspaces and new friendships over and over and over again. There's a beautiful saying that is the lesson will repeat itself until you're willing to face off with it. You can choose 
evolve or repeat. The truth is that life will never stop giving you challenges. Life's going to rock and roll you no matter what. But it's when we face off with ourselves and realize that we're actually creating all of it from our own mind, from our own programs, from our own decisions, from those programs. And a lot of those programs, as we've talked about many times before, are unconscious. We create and we move through life 95% from the unconscious programs. And so can we start to make an active decision to change our programming? And the more you do this, and it's so hard to know or to even hear this from a victim mentality state. And I can tell you right now, it took me a lot of rock bottoms, far more than I would care to admit, to finally go, okay, maybe I am a bit of the problem. Maybe I could start to make changes. And when you do, and the more you do, those challenges of life actually become fun because you realize how in control you actually always are. And one of the most common signs of victim mentality is continued self-sabotage in the form of negative thinking. The good news is that it's not an inherited trait. While you may have had programming and parents and family that did talk negatively or did certain behaviors that you've adopted, that doesn't mean that you'll never be able to get rid of it. (laughs) Rather, you've learned to behave in this way. And so you can actually unlearn and learn new things. At one time, you were likely a victim, but you don't have to continue to be a victim. Continuing to be, be a victim after the event is a choice. I'm going to say that again, continuing to be a victim after the event has occurred is a choice. A victim blames others for their current situation, even when others may have nothing to do with it. And they themselves are to blame or at least partly to blame. So yes, your rights, maybe they were violated and you didn't deserve what happened to you. You do deserve compassion. And if you don't give those things to yourself, no one else, I repeat, no one else giving them to you will ever feel like enough. If you do not give those things to yourself, no one else giving them to you will ever feel like enough. Now, if you find yourself in a state of victim mentality, here are some tips to help you evolve and move through to a better mindset. So you can choose to either leave situations or find ways to accept them. And those in the Lovely Radical Academy know how we do that. And it's a beautiful process. Read more self-help books, listen to podcasts, tune into amazing resources and tap into the people who have created the outcomes that you really want. They're there. Perhaps you're just not seeing them right now because you've been choosing to focus on the problem. So how can you start to focus on who may have a solution? And if you don't already have my list of 100 conversations that will change your life, you can find that in any of my bio links or whatever you say these days (laughs) developing emotional intelligence so this means looking at the difficult emotions that you have and recognizing your emotional buttons and triggers and patterns that you may have on your own and in relationships take responsibility for what you can control in your life right now and how you respond rather than react in any given situation, take control over who you spend your time with. I did a video recently about changing tables and sometimes the table you've been sitting on is not going to be serving you anymore because maybe they're used to you 
telling your victim story. Maybe they even like you telling your victim story because it makes them feel better about their own lives. And that's not a malicious act. That's just the human brain keeping them safe. And so it's not about pushing people out of our lives and saying they're the problem. It's about going, wait, I'm going to take a step back and give to myself for a while and see what stays and maybe walk forward to see who else I could meet along this new journey of choosing to evolve, engaging in self-care and treating yourself with the compassion and the kindness that you would like to feel, let alone receive from others, engaging in self-love activities and really seeing yourself as a worthwhile person. Can you do that? And Asking yourself, if not, what specifically prevents you from doing that? There's a really great process that I call brain dumping, which is great for first thing in the morning when you wake up and your brain suddenly can start to go to that spiral of all the things that happened yesterday or last year or today that it could go wrong or might go wrong or all the things I have to do. Just write it all onto paper, let it spill out of you all the negativity, all the problems, all the drama, all the overthinking, let it spill out from pen to paper. Very important because there's a physical action of then taking it from your mind and out of your body onto a page and then rip it to pieces, chuck it in the bin, or I prefer to burn it, but you know, just be careful where you do that. (laughs) Start saying no to things, start actually creating space for yourself to do this work, to get to know yourself and to change your patterns and getting around yourself more rather than others can really help. Because like I said, sometimes people in your life are used to telling this victim story and they'll even try to continue to get you to tell it because it's comfortable for them. So maybe start saying no and taking more time for yourself, but also start saying yes. Start saying yes to new opportunities. Start saying yes to new environments. Start saying yes to new knowledge, especially if it feels kind of uncomfortable or annoying because it's probably what's going to lead you to the evolution that I presume you want. Otherwise, you wouldn't still be here. (laughs) Identifying personal goals that you can work towards. I cannot tell you how many people come to me telling me about their relationship or their breakup, but who cannot tell me what their goals are for their own life. This is so important because even if you've found the love of your life, this does not excuse you from the project of loving yourself, of creating your reason for being here. Like guys, someone's got to die first. And at some stage, one of you is going to be on your own again. And if you have no life, if you have no purpose, if you have no identity, as yourself, outside of your connections, your relationships, your children, your partner, your workspace, what are you going to do in that moment? Figure out how to get the same benefits you've been getting with a victim mindset in a new way. So for example, when we talk about problems, when we complain, when we gossip, when we blame other people, we actually release dopamine in our brain. We release happy hormones. We release these neurotransmitters that make us feel good. It's like actually taking an illicit drug or eating lots of sugar. You know what else we can do to release the exact same chemicals? We can compliment people. We can speak well of others. We can speak well of ourselves. We can exercise. We can eat well. We can meditate. It's knowing that we can change the habits and behaviors and reframe every time we start to go down that road of telling that story and choose differently. And part of this, I will wrap up with these tips is to practice gratitude for everything that you actually do have in your life. Because sometimes when we're in the midst of a victim story, we can think that nothing's working out for us when really we're living in one of the most incredible times to be alive. The resources that we have the ability to access information that we have, the ability to make money and improve our health and do so many things is abundant. And if you're not in a world where you know that, then maybe it's time to change tables. And if you're listening right now and perhaps it's not 
feeling like you, but met perhaps someone else that you know who has a victim mentality. It can be frustrating to try and help someone who has a victim mentality, but when they don't retake any responsibility for their life and seem to blame anyone else, there's only certain things that you can do that are really going to help things change. So yes, be compassionate and acknowledge that someone has faced painful events in their past. Identify specific unhelpful behaviors like shifting blame and complaining and gossiping because it's giving them that quick hit. Maybe they don't know that about the dopamine release. Most people don't. It was a surprise to me in 2017 when I learned it. Perhaps you've noticed that they've told the same story or a similar story over and over and over again, and they're not taking any personal responsibility for the creation of it. Can you be the friend or partner or colleague to actually point this out, knowing it won't necessarily be received well? Because I'll tell you right now, that's a better friend than any friend you could ever actually have. And yeah, maybe it means you're no longer friends. I've had to be that friend for a number of people that I love dearly in my life. And in that moment, I knew that this could be the end, and that I might never actually get to have them in my life again. And in some cases that was true. And in some cases it was true for a little while. And then they came back around. And for me, it was the people who challenged me, the people who triggered me that created my biggest breakthroughs when I finally decided to lean into it. So allow someone to talk and share their feelings. But if they're doing it for the third to 10th time, then it's time to call them out. Never apologize when someone is in a complete victim state and taking no responsibility. The word sorry, I think, should be just completely removed from our vocabulary unless it's like actually really needed because we say it so much and it's almost become, especially in difficult conversations, a placeholder or a place filler and it distracts from actually having a constructive conversation. So if someone's going, oh, but this, oh, but this and this is wrong and this person did this and this and this, just like, oh, I'm really sorry. Oh, I'm sorry that happened for you. I'm sorry you feel that way rather than like, well, what are you going to do about it? How can we move through this problem? What can we do next? Let's work this out together. What are your ideas of doing that? Like, can you replace the word sorry in all of your conversations with a constructive question instead. And then there's setting boundaries. So as the person who has the friend who is in victim state, potentially time to set boundaries, to actually say to them, hey, I love you, but I don't want to hear about these problems anymore if you're not actually going to solve them or if you're not open to solutions. And if they jump at this, be like, great, let's find the solutions together. Are you ready? Don't try and protect them from bad outcomes. There's a beautiful explanation of empathy that one of my amazing mentors, Elizabeth Ann Walker, describes because the etymology of the word empathy broken down is M to embody and path, which comes from pathos, which initially means patheticness. We don't want to embody someone else's patheticness or in the later days, path. We don't want to get onto someone else's path and pick them up and drag them because they'll never actually learn. Sometimes people do have to hit their rock bottom and create so much pain for themselves before they finally decide to actually take personal responsibility. It's the most unpopular part of self-development. I was just listening to a podcast with Tom Billio about this and he was like, anytime I talk about personal responsibility, people tune out, they turn off, they get angry or annoyed or defensive. And yet it is the key. It literally is the key. And so rather than getting onto someone else's path and trying to protect them and try to nurture them and trying to tell them it's going to be okay and actually just walk your own path and reach out to them and call out to them from your own path of improving and evolving and go, hey, come over here. This is really great. Come on, you can do it. What can you do to get up and get moving? What can you do to make changes? What can you do to evolve? Call to them from your own path of creating a beautiful life so that they have a point of reference for how it's done rather than them becoming dependent on people stepping onto their path and picking them up. 
rather than them being enabled by people embodying their problems and their patheticness and not actually picking themselves up. And once again, I'll remind you guys that this used to be me. I, be I was being enabled by people who were embodying my problems because I could talk about them all the time and who were giving me the pity party, which gave me the boost I needed for that day. It was never going to be sustainable, but it gave me a hit. When people pity us, it activates the rewards in our brain. But it's a lot better when we can create that for ourselves in a new direction with solutions and evolution towards the things we actually would love to experience in this life. So can you brainstorm with your friend ways to change their life, solutions they could seek, people that they could look to who have created solutions and learn from them? And ask questions, never make suggestions. We're very used to giving advice, sometimes very mindlessly, because it's something that we heard or something that we watched on a show or heard on a podcast or read in a book. We maybe haven't even applied it ourselves or maybe we have, but it's not going to necessarily land with this person. Ask them questions. They actually already know the things that they need to do. They have their own guidance, but it's so, so noisy in the head from the victim story that they haven't actually even been asking themselves the questions of how to get out of it. So ask questions, never make suggestions or give advice specifically, unless you're a coach like me, where you ask all the questions and then you guide to suggestions. <laughs> and there's a real process of that so that it actually lands. Otherwise you just shooting rubber bullets and it's never actually going to hit anything of value. Prepare for your conversations with these people as well. Don't allow yourself to get caught up in these bad dynamics because it can feel really good to bitch and moan and complain and gossip. And we're all susceptible to it. It's the easy hit for the human brain. So being aware of that, creating the boundaries and knowing how you're going to go into those conversations is incredible. So why would a victim mindset continue if it's making you feel so crap and creating such a horrible life. And the truth is there can be a lot of those secondary benefits that can result from a victim mindset. And it allows people not to take responsibility for their life. People will try to help you and solve your problems for you. Like I said, getting onto your path, you may feel addicted to the drama. And those of you who haven't read Existential Kink yet, it's a great book. <laughs> And I'll leave, leave it at that. You may prefer to, to avoid feeling angry and instead it's easier to feel upset or sad. And that's why I love working through the unconscious change processes in my programs and with my private clients that I do. Emotional change technique is a godsend for this. And if you haven't already reached out for a chat about doing that work, then you can all do that in the show notes below. Being a continued victim makes you feel like others actually value you because you get attention from it, right? It becomes a way of survival or habit. You're unconsciously afraid to face the anger, shame, fear, or sadness that is underlying the victim mindset in the story. My, maybe it helps you get through a really hard time and now it's just become a habit. But has it really gotten you through hard times if it's also creating more hard times through your programs and through your brain finding evidence of those programs again and again and again? And if people think you're struggling, then they won't criticize you, right? If it helps you to avoid conflict with others because you're a victim, why would I give that up, right? You're more likely to get what you want in situations when people already pity you. There are fewer expectations of you if everyone knows you're struggling. And people won't burden you with their problems if they already know you have a lot of your own. You have an influence on people when you play the victim. And it potentially forces other people to actually take care of you. And then you never have to take care of yourself. 
and you never realize how much you are actually in control. So yes, you may have a valid reason to feel like a victim. I certainly have had many. The question is, is that going to serve you moving forward? To continue to focus on it, to talk about it, to bring it up over and over again? Or is there something else that you could do instead? At the time, you were abused. At the time, you were assaulted or whatever it was. Maybe you were a child. Or maybe you were moving through your life on an unconscious program. And at the time, perhaps, you were not in control because you were a child or you were moving unconsciously. But anytime you bring up the problems of the past, you are now abusing yourself. Not the person who did it to you to begin with, you. Things will only stay active in our body and our mind with continued choice to focus on them. And this is tricky when we're living in a world where typical psychology or certain self-development arenas want to get you to focus on the trauma, want to get you to tell the story and bring it all up and pull it all to pieces and analyze it and work through it. It's actually not all that necessary. The details of the story are actually not necessary in order to completely transform it and to completely heal from it and integrate the learnings and the lessons and the wisdom and the strength to create what you would really like to experience. It's opposite. So either direct focus to something new. Otherwise, you're going to repeat patterns just in different situations. And perhaps you've been doing that and just stacking trauma after trauma after trauma on top of another, which is apparently called complex CPTSD, which I have been diagnosed with once or twice. And you know what? I'm good now because of a choice that I made over and over again to change the story. So are you abusing yourself over and over again after the event has finished? Because this impacts your nervous system. It impacts your mind, your relationships, every time you choose to do it. It also impacts the programs that you live your life by and the habits and the behaviors. You cannot change what happened to you, but you can change who you become because of it. Thanks, Tony Robbins, for that quote. You cannot change what happened but you can choose to turn it into something else that helps you win your life rather than continue to lose. You cannot change what happened to you, but you can choose to write a whole new story from this moment on. Become an actual adult and quit making excuses and complaining about something that is actually past. And you know what? Becoming an adult in this way is so much fun because you actually heal the child or the younger version of you that had been abused once and then over and over again by continuing to repeat the pattern. You heal them and you integrate that beautiful child energy as an adult who gets to win and make success in all areas. And that combination is the coolest feeling ever. And this was the hardest thing I ever had to do. The hardest thing I ever had to do was let go of my victim stories. And I chose a number of times to flip the majority of my world upside down in order to overcome a past victim mentality. I had to change friends, workplaces, countries, business daily habits, career path, and so much more 
And maybe you will too, or maybe your change will only require a small few pivotal things. And while you do this, an array of stories and emotions and thought patterns and anger to move through, to come to the other side, will be wild. And at times it might feel like, and I know that this was a story that came up for me, if I heal and create happiness, then the other person or persons who hurt me would never get what they deserve. Or it would make what they did to me okay. It would make what they did to me part of the reason why I created success. And that was really hard to overcome that thought because I wasn't ready for them to have that power. And then I asked myself, do I want to be right? Or do I want to be happy? The other thing that came to mind was, would it make me the bad one for being the victim for all those years, potentially, even though I was doing the best I could with the resources I had at the time? And I asked myself, do I want to be the perfect one? Or do I want to be happy? Can you choose to challenge yourself to change? Or will you continue on a road of quick hit pity parties and repeating pain to prove yourself right in your misery? This has been such a fun topic and a spicy topic. And I'd love to hear what came up for you as you move through it. And if you'd like to be part of the Lovely Radical Academy or experience the breakthrough process that I mentioned earlier, then make sure you reach out on social media or you can email support at lovelyradical.net with the subject line, I am ready to break through. Thanks for being here and I'll see you all on the next episode.